It is Monday, April 15th, tax day. And you are watching or listening to Guy's Daily Drive. Boom! Guy's Daily Drive. I actually am getting started on this earlier than I usually do. I mean, usually when I'm doing Guy's Daily Drive, I wind my way all through the neighborhoods because I don't want to, uh, um, what's a good word, um, be distracted while going through and having all these people that are doing crazy things like someone's lawn care truck just stopping halfway through a turn for reasons or cars doing illegal u-turns which brings me to at least the first thing that I'm going to talk about today and that is why are parents so interested in hobbling emotionally and physically their children I I just don't get it. Um, every single day when I leave, I pass by this one corner where the bus stop is. And every single day I see, you know, kids waiting there at the corner. But then I also see like three to six cars also just sitting there with their kids inside, which means that they left the house with their children in the car, drove them to the bus stop, and then sat with them in the car instead of, you know, their kids just simply leaving the house and walking to the bus stop. Or if you're going to take it to that extreme, just drive them to whatever school it is that they're going to. But to, to do this dance where you know, you take them to the bus stop and then when the bus shows up, they get out of the car and they get into the bus and that's how they get, to, it's ridiculous. It's like, do one or the other. Either have your kids walk to the bus stop or take them all the way to school. Otherwise, it's just, it's just nonsense. You know, and you know, here, here we go with my, hey, when I was a boy, 15 miles uphill both ways, blah, 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 blah. And it's not, it's not that bad. I mean, well, number one, growing up in South Florida, there were no such things as hills. You know, the closest thing we had to a hill was when you got to the railroad tracks and you had to walk up and over the trestle, you know, over the tracks that were right there. That was about as, as the biggest hill that we had to, had to worry about down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But it was a, I'm going to guess... Probably about, ooh, sorry, lots of cars coming at the moment. It was probably about a mile each way to walk to the elementary school. Because I, actually, I didn't start in that elementary school. It was Oakland Park Elementary, which is now, as far as I know, to the best of my knowledge, still a historic landmark was built in the mid 1920s and served as the, the auditorium that they had served as a hurricane shelter for some great big huge hurricane that happened in 1926 so that's why it's on the historical register I guess but it was like about a mile away from you know where our house was and it wasn't a bad walk it was a great walk and you know granted we're talking about weather in South Florida, which is typically pretty pleasant, you know, but you never know when a rainstorm is going to pop up or, you know, something along those lines. So, you know, it was a very pleasant, mild walk. And, you know, living here in Northern Virginia, okay. now that spring is here, I mean, I'm not, I don't even have a coat on today. Now that spring is here, it's, I think when I left the house, and it's probably about the same, it was 61 degrees, which in South Florida would have 
you know, breaking out a parka. But for, come on, come on, come on, there you go. But for Northern Virginia, that's, uh, that's t-shirt and shorts weather. So, you know, it, it's not like these kids are gonna be facing adversity in, in trying to get to the bus stop. You know, just let them, give them a little bit of, of not even really freedom, but a, a, a little bit of responsibility, which is to leave the house at a good time before the bus shows up and then go to the bus stop. And if they can't do that, if they can't manage that, then unless there's something seriously wrong with them, you have failed as a parent to have them just do this one little thing. This one little thing, it's not that big of a deal. Walk to the bus stop. Just let them walk to the bus stop. And again, if, if you don't think they can handle that, then take them all the way to school because this halfway crap is just for the birds. <sighs> you know, I spent the last guy's daily drive talking about the failed trip to Rochester for the eclipse. And uh, the guy that works right next to me is from Rochester and he went back to home to see the eclipse and he basically told me I wasn't missing a whole lot, that it was completely, you know, covered in clouds. And I mean, you did see, you did see it get dark when there was totality, but you didn't see like the, you couldn't see the, the various phases as the moon was, was gliding over. So in that regard, I'm not unhappy that I didn't go. Uh, but on the other hand, we were going to do lots of other stuff too. We were going to kind of explore the area and it, that would have been fun. So, you know, it was kind of six of one, half dozen of another. We just, and I did get my money back in various ways. So I guess um, there's, there's not really much else that, that I can complain about with that. It just, it just sucks that something I put so much energy and time into planning wasn't able to come to fruition because of uh, just coming down with COVID and, and being sick. But it is what it is. I watched the um, UFL games yesterday and for the most part, they were pretty good. They were fun to watch. And I'm still hoping to go see the DC defenders play at Audi Field. Uh, hopefully that won't be an issue and I'll be able to go. Uh, I would love it if Tracy would go with me or if she doesn't want to go, I'll, I'll try to find a neighbor or someone else to go with me. Because those kinds of things are best experienced with someone else with you. You know, and whether it's a trip to Rochester to go to Seneca Falls or a football game from a spring football league, the, you know, when you're going on, and really what these are, and it's minor, but they're adventures. They're, they're little adventures where you're going to go to an event or a happening or a concert or a play or, you know, what have you. And when you go by yourself, it's just, it's not nearly as much fun. It's, it's, you're just there, you know, surrounded by a lot of people that you don't know. And for the most part, on most occasions, it's, it's just, it's just not fun. Now, one event that's coming up, which I will be going to by myself, uh, but will be fun because I know a lot of the people there, at least I'm planning on going, is the um, Mac Stock Conference and Expo. You can find out more information. This wasn't intended. It just, just kind of came into my head as I was talking. Mac Stock conference and expo.com maxstock expo.com basically if you just type in maxstock expo into uh, a search field online it'll get you there it's going to be in july from friday july 11th to sunday july 13th or maybe it's the 12th through the 14th it's, it's three days it's that weekend uh, after the 4th of july and it's in a new venue this year. It's at a Holiday Inn in, I think it's in Crystal Lake. And this Holiday Inn 
has a big conference center. So that's where the event is going to be held this year. And the, the nice thing about it is in previous years, you've had to go from whatever hotel you were staying at to uh, the McHenry Community College, which it was a nice venue, but it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't anything really close by as far as a place to stay. Or uh, like last year, it was in downtown Woodstock at the Opera House. And you know, both of those venues are fine, but to have it actually at the hotel where a lot of people could stay is like the ultimate convenience. You roll out of bed, you get a breakfast, and then you're at the expo. And there's no muss, no fuss. And I gotta tell you, you know, I have attended every single one that's been available except for one. And each and every time, it has been a great time. So if you're uh, a fan of technology or Apple in general, or <laughs> just the Mac or just the phone or whatever, there's gonna be lots of information and lots of topics that, uh, that is, are gonna be covered and they're covered well by just regular people, not like industry insiders or, or people that work for a company that are pushing an agenda. These are just people like you and me, they're users. So, you know, and the fact that everyone is super available to talk to and to ask questions of, you know, there's no hidden agenda here. This isn't a conference where you're gonna have thousands of people and you kind of get lost in the shuffle. This is a, a small conference, usually just a couple of hundred people, and every single person that is presenting and is available to talk to, as well as you can network with other people that are there. And it's, it's just a great little show. So that's going to be in July. Check it out at, you know, just Max Stock Expo and, and you'll see, you can get more information there. Uh, it's in the Chicago area, so it's like super accessible to pretty much anywhere, any, anyone anywhere in the world. You can get to Chicago a lot of times, most times nonstop from almost anywhere, you know, unless you live like in New Zealand or Australia or something. You might have to make a stop someplace. You might want to make a stop someplace. Uh, but yeah, you know, Chicago is a, is a big place and it's really easy to get to. So check that out. Um, Mike Potter puts on a great show. Uh, he also has his own podcast if you want more information uh, for Mac Eyes Only. And there'll be more information there. So I think that is going to do it for today. Thank you all so very, very much for joining me on Guy's Daily Drive. And you can reach me by sending me an email to guy at mymac.com. You can go to my YouTube channel where I, I post all of the all the vids, all the videos related to Guy's Daily Drive and the MyMac.com podcast on my channel, uh, Vert Shark. So like, share, subscribe to that. Yeah, just do that. A lot of fun. Uh, there's also, of course, my website, which is VertShark.com. I am on all of the social medias, pretty much. You know, I don't keep track of all of them, but I, I am on a lot of them as Mac Barrett. And on uh, the X's, I am both Mac Parrot and Vert Shark. And I think, uh, and there's a Google Voice number. If you go over to mymac.com or vertshark.com, you can find that number there. It's just a Google Voice number. But thanks again to all of you who have joined okay. me today on Guy's Daily Drive. Somebody commented, but of course I can't read it. Not while I'm driving. But I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful wonderful day and i will see all of you all of you next time right here on guys daily drive bye bye